Hi everyone, welcome to my Facebook Live today. My name's Mandy Witherby from Mandy's Papercraft Creations and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Sydney, Australia. How are you all today? Thank you so much for being here. It's great to have you join me. Now, I'm just going to do a little flippity flip of the screen so everything will be around the right way for you. So just bear with me for one moment and I'll do that. There we go. And just adjust my camera. So just this week, Facebook changed a few things again. And so now I can't flip my camera until after I start my live. So that means that I can't do all the setup that I normally do until I've already started. Um, so I apologize for that little interlude there. So I think we're all good now. Awesome. So if you are um, watching me live today, you will see a little red, oh, it'll be this side. You'll see a little red live button at the top there and you'll know then that you are watching me live. If you're watching the replay later on, thank you so much for coming to my Facebook um, business page and viewing my live. Or if you're watching on YouTube later on, thank you as well for watching there too. So while I'm just waiting for everyone to jump on, I'm going to call this up on my iPad so that I can see all of your comments. So just bear with me for one moment and I'll bring this up. There we go. Okay, great. Good. So if you are jumping on, feel free to say hi in the comments below. And um, it's, I love it when you interact with me and it makes it um, much more fun to have you all here with me. Hey Megan, how are you today? Great to have you here. Hey Kelly, you found me. Fantastic. Great to have you here with us today. Thank you for joining us. That's so exciting. Hi Angela, how are you today? Great to have you with us as well. Everyone is finding me now. Sometimes it takes a few moments for people to find um, the notification that comes up when I go live. So if you're not already following my business page, be sure to click on following at the top of the page so that you'll get notified every time um, I either post or when I go live. So you'll be sure to always be kept updated. Now, if you're watching on my YouTube channel later on, um, feel free to subscribe there as well if you like my videos. Um, click on the subscribe button and next to the subscribe button you'll see a little bell icon. If you click on that little bell icon then you'll be sure to get notified every time I upload a new video. And if you're looking for my business page coming from my YouTube channel then I always put all of the links below the description of the video and I try to remember to always put them in my Facebook page too so that if people are going from my Facebook page then they can find my other social media channels as well because I've got YouTube and and I've got um, a blog and I've got Pinterest and I've got Instagram so I've got them all and um, I don't do Twitter though <laughs> uh, but yeah you'll find me in all those places and I do try to remember to put my links um, with my videos so that people can find me all right so um, oh Megan says she's wearing her new Seattle Seahawks baseball cap that just arrived from Lumen Field, Seattle. Oh, very good. Sounds awesome. Sounds like you are an avid Seattle Seahawks fan for sure. <laughs> I've never heard of Lumen. I don't actually know where that is, but I heard, I've heard of Seattle mainly through the movies because I've never actually been over to America. But, um, but that's really exciting. Um, Helen's here from New Zealand as well. Hi, Helen. Great to have you with us. Navon is here as well. Hi, Navon. Great to have you here. Ah, oh, thank you. You're so sweet. <laughs> it's great to have you with us. So, um, I'm filming this on Thursday, the 21st of October, and I should know that date because it is one of my daughter's birthdays today. We actually had a celebration yesterday for her because she's working today. And our son is also going to be working and he works late night. So um, we celebrated last night. So my day yesterday was pretty much filled up with helping our other daughter, Amber, my eldest daughter, um, who helps me with my business too. Um, she was doing a lot of the uh, preparations. So decorating and baking of cakes and things. So I was helping her a little bit. Um, and then we had the celebration last night. So that was... Um, our day yesterday so very late last night I thought oh I haven't got anything prepared to, for today's live so 
Amber and I sat down with our eyes falling out of our head and we prepared a quick card um, for today. So um, on Thursdays, I like to do quick and easy projects. Um, for those of you who might like doing quick and easy simple projects and perhaps those of you who might be new to card making or just thinking about um, getting into card making, then I like to do quick and easy projects to, um, to help you as well. So if you've got any questions as I'm going along, feel free to put them in the comments and I'll see them pop up on my iPad. Now they do disappear from my iPad, um, but if I tap the screen, they come back up again. So if I happen to skip over a question um, and I don't address your question, feel free to ask it again, okay? Just in case I happen to miss it, um, when my screen goes dark before I tap it again to come back up. Um, oh, Judy's here too. Hi, Judy. Great to have you here today. Brooke's party was lovely. I haven't uploaded any photos yet. Um, but yeah, we had a, well, we had, we were having a lovely evening, but we got some news about John's mum as uh, the evening went on. She'd had a fall. So we had a little bit of a um, worrying time there as well last night so a bit of a bit of ex mixed emotions last night <laughs> um, but she's okay we heard this morning that she's okay she did bump her head but um, but she's all right so um, and she's in nursing care at the moment so she's okay she's being looked after um, oh, I can tell you what the theme was now too um, the theme for um, Brooke's birthday was a sea theme because she is um, she holds a degree in marine biology and also zoology and she's a marine mammal keeper that's her job um, she works at sea life aquarium in Darling Harbour here in Sydney and um, she looks after the dugong and so um, my daughter oh I wish I had have thought to bring it in I'll put up photos though uh, my other daughter Amber she made her a beautiful card which was um, the dugong that Brooke works with. His name is Pig. It's not a very nice name, but he was named that as a baby before he came to Sea Life Aquarium. His name is Pig and he is Brooke's baby. She absolutely loves him. She does training with him and all sorts of things. But um, Amber made her this awesome card, all out of Stampin' Up! products, made this awesome card of Pig. And um, Brooke just loved it. I think she wanted to take it to bed with her almost. <laughs> And then she made this awesome cake for her, which was a sea theme, and it had a dugong on the top of the cake. Um, and it had these splashes that she'd made with, um, like, toffee. Uh, it was really amazing. And, yeah, it, it was, she really blew me away. And she decorated the um, living room or the family room and the dining room in sea themes. So we had sand and shells, and um, we have a plant out the back, which is a coral succulent and so she'd um, used bits of that because it does look like coral and she'd use that to decorate as well for the greenery but I'll put up all the photos later um, but yeah it was really fantastic yeah and Brooke loved it so and we had a, lump, a yummy baked dinner for, for um, tea so that was nice yeah oh thanks Megan I'll pass that on <laughs> um, yeah the best way to craft oh late night Yes, <laughs> we often do late night crafting. <laughs> uh, oh, Megan says her goddaughter would love Brooke. Oh, is she into animals as well? Brooke's so passionate about animals, yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, Kelly said that's so cool. Judy shares a lot about Brooke. That's really cool. Yeah, she's very proud of her nieces and nephews. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Judy said she set up her iPad and it's playing again. Oh, good. Oh, it's freezing all the time. Yeah, iPads, for some reason, I don't know what it is, but iPads with lives nowadays, I don't know if it's changed with the settings in Facebook or what it is, but with Facebook lives, iPads seem to freeze. Um, I've actually had a few people say that and I know that for myself as well. Um, and even with my AirPods, they sort of freeze and go a bit funny too with my iPad. Whereas I never have that problem with my phone or my computer. So I don't know what it is with iPads and Facebook at the moment. So switching to the TV screen so I can watch but won't be able to comment. Oh, that's okay. No worries, Judy. Uh, Megan says her goddaughter loves all animals, especially her horses. Yes, Brooke is very passionate about horses too. And she used to ride when she was young. She used to have lessons. Um, then she didn't have 
any lessons for about th or any contact with horses for about three years because her original instructor moved down south. Um, the new instructor um, closed down her, no, she moved, that's right, she moved her business out of area. It was a long way away that we couldn't get to. And then the next time we went to see horses, we went back to um, down south to see her original um, instructor who we became good friends with. She's a fr We call her our friend now because we've known each other for so many years and we became good friends. Um, but in that time, Brooke didn't have exposure. She developed an allergy to horses. So now she's actually severely allergic, almost to the point of anaphylaxis. Um, so whenever we go near horses now, we have to be extremely careful with Brooke. Um, well, she needs to be careful herself, <laughs> but she loves them. So crazy about them. So, all right. Well, let me tip the camera down onto the desktop and we'll get started. So any of you that are new to card making, if there are, there might be lots of things that I talk about that you're new to that you might not understand straight away, but that's okay. Stick with me. You'll get the hang of it eventually. But if you have questions, pop them up in the comments um, and feel free to anytime send me a private message as well and ask me for clarification on anything or if you've got any questions or any way that I can help you in your creative journey, then um, feel free to always send me a message, okay? Um, I'm always on my social medias day and night, so I'm usually fairly available. Unless I'm filming, then I'll get back to you as soon as I can. All right. Um, uh, oh, Kelly said, I'm calling your TV the walking the Walker Cinema. Oh, <laughs> that's in response to Judy. <laughs> that's cool. Megan says her parents breed them. And Liberty Jane, who won who is now seven, has been riding since she was three. Ah, oh, and not even cancer could stop her. Oh, bless her. Oh, that's so good. The connection that we have with animals um, is so special, isn't it? It's really amazing. Yeah. Oh, Kelly's getting a pen to write down all her questions. Awesome. That's great, Kelly. And also, too, I give measurements as well for all of the um, the projects that I create as well so you might even want to write down measurements so all right so what I'm going to do is I will cover up the camera I'm going to flip it down onto my desktop and I just cover it up so that I don't make anyone dizzy or make you motion sick while I get it all ready um, so bear with me for a moment I'm going to do that now here we go all right I'm going to flip my cameras so we'll be round the right way and I'm going to adjust my camera stand it might be a little bit noisy and clunky while I just do that and squeaky because I have to adjust all of these clamps you see that hold my phone all right get that all tightened up okay there we go all right I'll just adjust my lights and we should be good to go we've got a beautiful day here today in Sydney I have to say it is sunny I'm just going to tweak that a little bit it is sunny and beautiful and I was outside this morning with our puppy and um, sitting out there in the sun and I actually started to get a bit warm so um, I brought her in out of the sun oh that's still a bit crooked I did one of my clamps up really tight yesterday and so now it's a little bit um, it's a little bit tight to move it so it makes it oh now my iPad's frozen up Judy <laughs> I'm having the same problem as you. I might pull out my laptop and get that set up quickly so that I can view it on there. I had this trouble on Monday as well. So I'll just bring that out too so that I can view it on my laptop. Yes, I don't know what's going on with these iPads lately. But they're being a little bit cantankerous. I don't think it's the iPad though itself. I think it might be Facebook. All right. So down on my desk, I have got, and because I can't see this at the moment on my iPad, I'm just not sure how, if you can see that. I'll pull it down a little bit. Here we go for the moment. And then I'll move it up in the moment when I can see it on my computer screen. Um, but any of the products that I show you today are available in my online store. So there's two ways you can get to my online store. So you can go via my blog, which is mandyspapercraftcreations.blogspot.com. So you might want to write that one down, Kelly, too. Go and check out my blog. 
Um, on my blog, there's lots of creative inspiration. So you'll see that um, when you go to the landing page or the first page you get to, there'll be four different um, projects there that you can see. If you click on them, because it just gives you like a little image and a little bit of a blurb. If you click on it, it opens up the full blog post. So there'll be four and then you can click on see more and then it will open up more and more. Um, so that's on the page. You can also see PDF versions of the catalogs on my blog page as well over on the right hand side column. And then along the top, you'll see my shopping button, um, more information uh, about me. No, no, my about me is on the other side. I've just moved everything on my blog. So I'm trying to remember what's there. My shop, my join button, information about my technique club, um, tutorials that can be purchased and all sorts of things. So go there and check it out anyway. Um, this is my host code for the month of October. So if you're shopping with me during October, be sure to use this host code when you go to the online store um, when you're shopping with me and be sure that you've got that entered before you go right through to the register. Okay, and then that way I can look after you as my customer. All right, be sure that you have signed in as a, cust as a customer and please don't ever sign out as a guest because if you sign out as, sign out as a guest, I'm unable to contact you. Um, it's part of our policy. Um, some people don't want to have the contact and that's totally fine too. They just want to purchase the products and go on their merry way and that's okay too. I'm still thankful for those um, orders. Um, but it just means that I can't look after you as my customer. So be sure that you do sign in. Okay, so I'm just getting up, getting this up on my computer. So bear with me for two secs. All right. And I'm going to show you, first of all, this is our beautiful annual catalogue. Now, of course, it doesn't come spiral bound when you get it. I went to my local stationers, my local office works, and had the spiral binding put on it because I like to open my catalog out completely flat and I'm using mine every day. So that just makes it easier for me. And I have a clear cover put on the front of it too to protect it so that it lasts me the entire year. And I have a clear cover on the back too. You'll see I've got all of my, actually I'm going to put a little, Oh, I don't have my sticky notes here right next to me, but I'm going to just pop a little piece of paper in there because that's the page I want to go to. Um, I've put some little tabs down the side that I have um, just to help me find things quickly. And these are some of my wish list items at the top there. But this is our beautiful annual catalogue. It's going to go up until April 2022. And um, I'm just bringing this up on my iPad now. Let's refresh that page. Okay, great. I found that on my iPad now, so all good. Um, yeah, so this catalogue has got all of your staple products in terms of all your um, papers. So your cardstock, your designer series paper, which is our patterned papers. Um, your inks, all of your tools, and then you've got a whole heap of stamp sets, dies for your die cutting um, machine, um, punches. We've got lots of different shape punches as well, and um, lots of the you know the products that you'll you'll use day to day. Um, so I'll go through some of those products as we're using them today and explain those for any of you that might be new. Um, so yeah, so this is a beautiful catalog and at the moment as well, we also have our mini catalog, which has got a lot of the beautiful Christmas um, themed products in them, as well as some nature themed products in there too. And Halloween, if you celebrate Halloween, they're in here as well. Um, but yeah, this is this is a current one that um, that is available as well too. And this one just goes until the 3rd of January. This is our mini catalog. So it's sort of like a supplement catalog to our main catalog. So there's lots of gorgeous um, products in here as well. So you'll see on some of my videos um, that I've played with some of these already. Um, and I'll probably still continue playing with them for the next couple of months. All right. So 
what I will do, I'm just putting my, oops, sorry about that, I'm just putting my iPad, uh, sorry, my computer over in front of me so I can, in case my computer freezes again. So what we're going to be playing with today is, and I'll tuck my catalogue back here, over on itself so we can just see that single page we're going to be playing with the beautiful Bartik boutique or uh, sorry yeah Bartik boutique or you might say um, Batik boutique depends on how you pronounce that word different people pronounce it different ways so this is a gorgeous two-step stamp set and I'm going to show you how to use a two-step stamp set um, now some of our stamp sets are just single step stamp sets and some are double step or two step stamp sets and some are three step stamp sets and it just means that you can add additional color to your um, project or to your stamped images with using different colors of ink with the different stamps that coordinate so I'll explain more about that as we go this stamp set does have coordinating dies that go with it um, but I'm not going to be using the dies today because I just wanted to keep it fairly simple using stamp inks and paper um, especially for those quick and easy projects then we're going to dress it up with a little bit of bling um, and yeah so we'll make it all pretty and beautiful um, so with our cardstock too you can purchase the cardstock in um, packs of colors so like assortment packs and you'll find those here in your catalog as well uh, it's under the back under accessories so this is all of our color collection here um, you'll find this on pages 122 and 123 of the annual catalog so this is where you'll find all of the color range okay so um, there's lots of different colors and they're in different color families so we've got the brights the neutrals the regals subtles basics and then we've got the in colors as well so the in colors there's two different lots of in colors and each one of those um, sticks around for a two-year period and then they get swapped out but all the other colors they stay all the time okay now you can purchase the um, cardstock because obviously when you're stamping you need some cardstock so it's always great to have white cardstock in your stash actually I'll just go back so you can see here the codes in the um, catalog for cardstock okay so it shows you all the different things you've got cardstock you've got the classic stampin pads the um, classic stamp and pad ink refill so when your pads um, get used over time they will dry out a little bit and you can buy the ink refill to um, moisten them back up again and then you've got the stamp and blends which is a coloring tool that's another class all in its own but today we're keeping it easy so basic white cardstock is always great to have in your stash because you can use that for your card bases and you'll use that a lot for your stamping and then in terms of the colors to make a pretty card with lots of color you can purchase the cardstock in packs of the color family so you get lots of different colors in the one pack um, so they come this is on page 126 of the annual catalog and the cardstock packs come in brights neutrals regals and subtles okay in each pack you're going to get 10 colors and you'll get two pieces of each of those 10 colors so you can choose which color family you like from back on the pages that I just showed you and you can choose to get an assortment pack so you get all of those colors in one pack of cardstock now the cardstock comes in a4 sheets and then you can just cut them in half to make um, your card base so I'll show you how we've done that today so that's a great place to start usually you can also purchase the inks um, as a bundle as well if you want to get the color family but at the moment they're only available in individual colors because of the um, shipping um, issues at the moment that um, everywhere globally around the world is experiencing um, same with the ink refills you can purchase them as a collection we've also got coloring tools called stamp and write markers they can be purchased as a collection um, but always great to have a look at that page too to see what else is available we've got some other coloring tools that are available here too so you can check them out as well so that's sort of your, your basis to start with is stamps ink and paper so you need a stamp set 
you need some paper to stamp onto and of course you need your ink all right so oh i'll go back to the um bartik stamp set oh i've lost my page now oh i didn't have that tabbed because i was going to show you uh where is it page so in the back of your catalog there's an index of all of the stamp sets in case you didn't know that so here it is page 114 because i want to just show you Uh, this one here there we go so this card here that you'll see so in throughout the catalog you'll see lots of samples of different projects but this one here is the one that has inspired the card that I'm going to be making today so um, I'm not making it exactly the same as this but it's this is the one that has inspired my card so I'll show you how I'm going to change it or what what we call is case so copy and selectively edit or copy and share everything c-a-s-e um, so i'm taking this card and i'm going to case it but i am changing it up a little bit too so here's my stamp set okay this is a photopolymer stamp set photopolymer is the material that it's made of and it means that they are clear stamps which is great because it makes it easy to see through them when you're stamping especially great when you're using a two-step stamp set like this. Now, these new stamp cases have the images printed on the inside, so you can take the stamps off these um, uh, surfaces that they come on and you can stick them straight into your stamp case and then you'll know that you've always got all of your stamps together and you'll know that if you're missing any when you go to stamp because sometimes you go to put your stamps away and you'll be missing some because you've accidentally put them down somewhere or you've forgotten to return them back to your case etc so this way you'll never lose them you'll know that they belong in here now I've taken some out of here already and put them on my clear blocks ready to start stamping so I will show you that and these other ones I'm just going to pop in here there we go I like to just pop this just back over the top again so they don't stick together. So I'll just pop that over there. And so when I close them, I've got my um, stamps all ready to go. Now, this is a two-step stamp set because we've got different stamps in this stamp set that overlay each on each other. So you can use these individually just as they are, but they have these other parts as well that combine with them. Um, so we're going to do a little bit of two-step stamping today and I'll show you what I mean with that So these are the ones that we're going to be using today and I've already popped them on our clear acrylic blocks So these clear blocks are also in the annual catalog towards the back of the catalog in the tool section and These stamps are removable because they're a bit sticky on the back. That's the material that they're made of is sticky um, We also do have cling stamps which are a red rubber stamp and they have a special surface on the back of them as well that clings to these blocks as well. And so they are also removable. So these blocks come in all different sizes and depending on the stamp set, usually in the catalogue you'll find um, it'll tell you what size blocks you will need to fit your stamp set. Um, okay, because some of them are longer, some of them are wider. Um, but I've got a few different sizes here you can see to um, fit the stamps that we're using today. Okay, the other thing um, we're going to be using is um, the Biggest Wish stamp set because the Batik stamp set doesn't have any sentiments with it and I wanted to just add a little sentiment. So I pulled out the Biggest Wishes. These are two of my newest stamp sets that I haven't used yet. So today's the first time I'm using them. So they're brand new, brand new to me. Um, and yeah, I'm excited to, to get a bit of ink on these ones today. So they're the ones we're going to be using. Now I am bringing in also to some designer series paper or patterned paper as we call it. Um, oh, hi Nola, how are you going? I just realized I've missed a few comments while I've been chatting. Um, okay. So do, 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 do um 
Oh, you love my table, Megan. This is actually a photographic background. It's um, it's actually not my desktop. It's a surface that I've added to my desktop. <laughs> but yeah, it comes up well on the camera, um, which is why I got it. Um, Oh, and Kelly says uh, she's responding to Judy. Judy's going to play. Oh, she's going to play with the lovely things that Judy gave her yesterday um, to make some cards today. Awesome. That's fantastic. Um, oh, and Kelly's already set up her customer account. Well done, Kelly. That's fantastic. Um, yeah, awesome. Great to see you, Nola. Great to have you with us today. Okay, I love that you're chatting. You're all chatting together as well. That's fantastic. Good job. Um, oh, Megan says she loves that I'm not. She's not the only one with many tags in her catalog. Yes, I always have lots of tags in all my catalogs, Megan, because you think you filled the wish list and then you find something else. <laughs> the wish list is forever going. Um, the mini catalog, yes, the mini catalog is also online on my blog, Judy. So there's a PDF version of it on my blog. So if you go to my blog, you'll be able to um, see it there. Yeah. Oh, Kelly says she's in so much trouble. She's loving all of this already. That's awesome. <laughs> hey, Laurie, how are you going? Great to have you with us all the way from Ohio today. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to be using some of the designer series paper from the Pattern Party designer series paper. Now, this is a huge pack of 48 sheets. You'll see I've already cut some of this. Now, this paper pack comes in 12 by 12 inch sheets. And there's lots and lots of different patterns in here. Now, you'll notice with this one, it is not themed as some of our other designer series paper is. Um, there's just lots of different colors, lots of different patterns, and you get several sheets of each one. I think there's four of each of the designs. And you've got all these patterns on one side and lovely colors. And I'm just going to do a very quick flick and I might even miss some of them. Now, this is one of our um, host um, paper pack sets. And so these ones are available for anyone that might like to host a party and with qualifying sales, you can get this one. Or if you're putting in a large order over $250, then you can get this um, paper pack as well. So you'll find all the information about um, hosting towards the, the back. Now I can run online parties for people as well. I'm just not holding any in-person parties at the moment just because of the risk of COVID. Um, but I can do online parties. So if you are interested in, interested in gathering your friends and having an online party via Zoom or via a private Facebook um, group, then feel free to let me know and I can certainly chat to you about how that works. Now on the other side of these papers, we've got all these beautiful black and white um, patterns, which are great. You can use them as they are. You can use them with some of our colouring tools and colour them. So these are really fantastic. Black and white papers are always great to have in your collection because there's so much that you can use them for. All right, so that's the um, Pattern Party Designer Series paper. Okay, so we're going to be using a little bit of that. And we're using some cardstock. So I've got all my pieces cut ready to go. And we're going to put this together um, today. So what I've done is I've taken one of our A4 sheets of basic black cardstock. And I've cut that in half lengthwise. And that has given me a piece that measures 21 centimeters by 14.85 centimeters. And I've scored and folded that at 10.5. Now, if you don't have a scoring tool, that's okay. Just You simply just fold your cardstock in half and then just press firmly along the side. I like to use our Stampin' Up! bone folder to just burnish. We call this burnishing when we rub that along the edge there. And that helps the card to sit down and gives that a nice crease along the edge. 
using some of that gorgeous designer series paper it's got the beautiful bright stripes on one side but I'm going to be using the black and white side this time and I'm actually going to have my card in a landscape orientation so that it opens this way okay then I've cut a little piece of oh I'll give you the measurements for this piece so the designer series paper is 14.85 centimeters by 10.1 centimeters. Then I've got a piece of bumblebee cardstock, and this is 14.85 by 7.5. So bumblebee is the color. Then I've got a piece of basic white, and this is 14.8 by 7 centimeters. So we're going to layer all these together like so. We're going to do some stamping on this piece first and then we'll layer everything together. All right. Before I do any stamping, I like to cover my work surface to protect it from any ink. So you can use scrap paper. I'm using some small grid paper today, which is also in the annual catalogue. And I'm going to do a little bit of stamping. I have got um, Memento Tuxedo Black ink. So this is a great black ink to add to your stash and this will be one of the most used inks that you'll have will be a black. You always need to have a black ink pad in your stash. So this is a great one to get to begin with if you're just starting out. Um, uh, Judy says, I'm having trouble finding a few of your recommended colour stamps pads i'll message you the colors i want and can't find okay no worries they should be on those pages that i mentioned earlier judy all of the colors are there if they are a current color um, perhaps the ones you're looking for might not be current but send me the list anyway and i'll help you out with that straight after this today i do have um, a zoom meeting but i will be available this afternoon after that so all good um, oh, Laurie said she just put an order in for the for the sale stamp sets. Fantastic. So Laurie's in the US. Um, we had our stamp sale yesterday, Laurie, because we're now on to Thursday, the 21st. And um, yes, yeah, so I ordered some more as well yesterday. So it was pretty exciting with our stamp set sale yesterday. All right, so Tuxedo Black. And then we're going to be using also some pear pizzazz and some bumblebee to add just a little bit of pop of color. And that's where we're going to do the two-step stamping in our color. All right, so I am going to start, I'll open up my ink and we're going to stamp onto the basic white piece first. So I'm going to work out, I need to work out where I'm going to put my sentiment actually. So I think I'm going to stamp my sentiment in Bumblebee and I might stamp my sentiment first because I want to be sure that I've got room for it. So I think I'm just going to stamp hello, just like in the sample um, project. So actually I'll move my black to the side for a moment. And I've got a large hello and a little hello, but I'm going to just use the small hello because I want to leave plenty of room for the flowers. All right, so I'll show you the best way to put your stamps on your block. If you pop your stamp down, so the stamp surface, which you'll feel is the raised side, that's the stamp surface, put that face down. So the flat part of the stamp is what is going to stick to your block. So I've just got a small C size block here, and I'm just going to take that to the stamp and pick it up. And there we go, now it's stuck to my block. Okay. So I'm going to start with stamping my sentiment first and then I can stamp the flowers. I'm going to use the Bumblebee ink to open it. It's like a makeup compact. So you just open it like this and then you're going to slide it in. Okay. All right. Now I'm going to give my stamp a little bit of a clean first because these stamps are brand new. And the photopolymer stamps, they carry a little bit of um, oils from the manufacturing. And it's a good idea to clean these ones first before you use them um, so that the, the ink will sit nicely on the surface of the stamp. Because otherwise, if they're a little bit oily, the uh, it doesn't hold the ink as well. So I'm just giving them a little bit of a clean. This is called a Simply Chamois. It's a cleaning tool that um, Stampin' Up sells. And I just keep it in a, a case. 
but it comes like this in a packet and you could just keep it in a Ziploc bag or um, if you don't have that you can use baby wipes or perhaps a chucks cloth or something like that that doesn't matter if it gets stained when you clean it because as you see with my chamois they, it does come a little bit stained over time but so long as you rinse this out I rinse mine out about a couple of times a week just to remove any excess ink it depends on how often you're using it and let it have a little bit of air every so often so it doesn't get moldy as well um, yeah so it's called a simply chamois and it doesn't come in the box I've actually put it in a clear one of our clear stamp cases all right so we've cleaned that oh did I clean the hello or did I only clean the so busy talking I'm not paying attention there we go all right so let's stamp our hello first so I'll make sure that that's dry and then I'm just going to tap 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 on the ink we don't want to press our stamp into the ink pad we're just tapping it on the surface because if you press it into the ink you'll actually um, what will happen is it'll press the ink down into the grooves of the stamp and then when you go to stamp it you won't get a nice um, a nice stamped image it might end up a bit smudgy so always just tap 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 all right and then we're going to clean our ink off our stamp straight away there we go right let's move on to our black and we're going to stamp our flowers now our memento ink pad is a different type of ink pad it's like a linen pad and um, it's not as soft and squishy as the um, classic stamp pads, the coloured ones. So what I like to do with this one is I like to rub it on my stamp first and then do some tapping. So rub, rub and then tap. But always finish with the tapping and that will give you a nice even coating of ink. So then have a look at your stamp and check to see that that's got a nice coat of ink. And then we're going to stamp our flowers. So I'm going to start here, around about here in the middle. I'm going to stamp these going off the bottom a little bit. There we go. So there's our first one. And we're just going to keep repeating that. And I'm going to have these stamped at different heights. There we go. I'll stamp that one down a little bit like that i've actually got a quilt cover that looks very similar to the um batik boutique or batik boutique depending on how you want to say it um flowers and when i saw this stamp set i thought oh my goodness that reminds me so much of my quilt cover um which isn't on my bed at the moment i've got a different one on my bed at the moment and my quilt cover is black and white and so I thought oh that well that could inspire a card and yeah so that's kind of where my idea for this one started but then it was quite similar to what was in the catalog as well oops I think I don't have quite enough ink just on that one there so it's quite a fine lined ink uh, image this one now I'm going to put one more over here and this is another reason to have paper underneath you so that if you're stamping off the edge of your page the edge of your paper the ink isn't going to go on your desktop there we go so we've got one going off the edge there great okay we'll give this one a little clean I'm just going to dab that ink that excess ink off onto paper first my scrap paper and then onto my chamois and that will it just means I'm taking less ink into my chamois. Then I don't have to clean it as often and it doesn't stain as much. All right, so that is the first step. All right, now we're going to go to the two step. Oh, actually, I was going to add some of these little ones in too. Is there enough room? There might not be enough room, actually. I was going to add these, but I've stamped these ones a little bit closer. So I don't think I'm going to fit that one in now. I think I'll just leave it with just these ones. Um, all right, so we've stamped this flower here and now in this stamp set we've actually got this part here which is the center of the flower and we've got this part here which will color portion of the leaves. So of course you could leave just the outline stamped like that, like we've got it and that's beautiful just as it is. If you've got coloring tools you could then go and color those in as it is there like that. 
or you can use the stamped images and make it quicker and easier for yourself, which is what I'm going to do today. So there I've got the inside of my flower and the inside of my leaves, and this is where I'm going to be using these colours. So let's start with the bumblebee. And I'm going to stamp the centres of the flowers. So just tap, 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 line that up. Now, because we've got clear photopolymer stamps, we can easily line that up. And look, now we've got that gorgeous pop of colour. And we're just going to do that with each of these, being sure to ink up our stamp in between each time we stamp. And look how gorgeous these are looking now. And this is such an easy way of colouring your stamped images rather than having to colour with a colouring tool. There we go. Now look, we've got that gorgeous colour and that coordinates with our hello. So we'll just dab that off again and I'll clean that straight away. Now just so you know, the photopolymer stamps do tend to hold a little bit of the pigment of the ink. So if they look like they're a little bit stained after you've used them, don't panic. That's okay. That's quite normal, um, especially with the darker tones like the deep blues, the deep reds, um, deep bright pinks. They really hold the color in uh, the, the photopolymer really holds those pigments in those particular colors. Um, so so long as you've cleaned your stamp after use, if it still looks a little sort of pinkish tinged, don't be worried because it doesn't affect how it stamps. It just means that the um, polymer has absorbed a little bit of that pigment. All right, and now we'll do the leaves and we're going to use some pear pizzazz. I love pear pizzazz. It's a really pretty green. Tap, 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 tap. And we're just going to do this inner portion of the leaves. So I'm looking through, hopefully my head isn't in camera, but I'm looking through the photopolymer. Because it's clear, you can see through it. Oh, I didn't even line that up properly. And usually, if you're looking properly, it's, it is a little bit more difficult when you've got a camera right overhead. That one I did better. There we go. Um, yeah, it makes it easier to line it up because it's photopolymer and you can see through it. Now, when you first stamp the inks and they're wet, they do look a little bit darker and they usually lighten up a little bit, or especially with the colours anyway, not so much the black, but um, they do lighten up. I might redo this one. They do lighten up as the, um, actually, you know what I'll do? I'll just do just the one leaf. I'll just do the one leaf again. Yeah, sorry, um, the colours do lighten up as they dry. There we go. So we've got a little bit of over inking on that one, but that's okay. See, now that looks really pretty. I love those colours. I love that bumblebee colour. It's gorgeous. Looks beautiful on those flowers. Now, haven't been looking at my comments. Let me double check comments. Oh, great. Kelly says, so cool. Love this. Um, Judy said, they were in the project with the beautiful autumn leaf as you did for John's birthday. Um, oh, the colours that you were looking for. Oh, okay, they were current colours, Judy. Yes. So just let me know which ones you're looking for. Um, how long does a stamp pad generally last? Um, a fair while. They. I really only replace my ink pads every few years. Some of the colours um, that I've had, I've had to replace a little bit more often, like some of the deep reds and things like that where they go a little bit spotty and a bit weird over time. Um, they are considered a consumable product, but usually for me, they last. I only really replace, I haven't even replaced all of them. I've only replaced a couple of different colors and probably after a couple of years. Yeah, they, they last a really long time. But usually what will happen is you'll just, with most of the colors, they're fine. All you need to do is once they dry out a little bit, you just buy the re-inker and you just add a bit more ink to them. Um, it's only particular colors, and I don't know why, but particular color ink pads, they just go a little bit motley and funny over time. But it's usually over a really long period of time. But the others, like, as I said, I haven't replaced all of them. It's only been a couple of colors here and there. Most of them have lasted me for years. So, and I just keep topping up the ink in them. So there we go. So there we've got our beautiful um, our beautiful piece there, which 
is going to be layered onto here but I thought we might try and put some ribbon on there first too so how beautiful is that so if you wanted to you could then just add that to all of your layers like that and that would be a beautiful card just as it is but I'm going to add some ribbon so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to adhere that to my piece of bumblebee okay so I'm going to turn it over I'm going to add some adhesive to the back now we've got lots of different types of adhesive we've got double-sided tape which we call tear and tape because you can just tear it um, you don't need to cut it and it's really easy to use so it's double-sided it comes with a paper coating on the top we've also got things like our tape runners which um, which are great as well these are my favorite ones to use they can take a little bit of getting used to especially the stamp and seal the stamp and seal plus is a little bit strong or is quite a bit stronger but they both have a different um, type of film in them like a different type of tape film and the seal plus is actually a bit easier to use than the stamp and seal then we've got our multi-purpose liquid glue as well um, which is also a great glue to have but i'm going to use look i'll use the um stamp and seal plus because that is the easiest one to use and i'll show you how to do that one so all you do is i've taken off the protective cap you just run that along and we do sell um refills for these as well so they just open up and you just take out the refill inside and then replace it there we go and so now we've got that tape on the back there just flip that over and I'm going to line that up. Now I'm just going to do it like this so that I can line it up end to end and make sure I've got an even border at the top and the bottom. There we go. Now I want to get this right because this stamp and seal is very sticky and if I get that stuck in the wrong spot, it's going to be hard to remove it. So there we go. So look at that pop of colour already. Isn't that gorgeous already? Just as it is. Now I've got a few ribbons here to choose from so I thought I would check to see so this is a um, bumblebee piece oh that one would go actually let me check I'm going to just have a look and see I haven't stuck this one down yet but I'm going to have a look and see how that will look on there oh, yes that will go okay that's the one I had all these other choices of ribbon out because I wasn't sure which one was going to work but that one is actually going to work so that is awesome let's use that one all right so there's lots of different ways you can do your ribbon um, I'm just going to do it I'm just going to do it the um, traditional way today so I'm wrapping it all the way around this way does use a lot more ribbon however I will just warn you um, but if you want to use less ribbon there's other there's other methods that you can use so I'm going to see if I can get a nice bow. If I can't get a nice bow, then I'm just going to do a knot. So we'll see how we go. Trying to tie bows on camera is always challenging. <laughs> and because you're always trying to rush when you do it as well. And so sometimes it doesn't always go well. Like right now, I just dropped the end. There we go move it over a little bit so if you love the Stampin' Up products and you have a long wish list or perhaps you're just new to get into um, Stampin' uh, into card making we also have um, we also have kits which are fully inclusive um, pro, um, project kits that oh look at that I got a pretty bow I did that I got it quite tied quite well today wow amazing let's just slide that across um, yes we do sell all-inclusive kits as well which are a great place to start um, if you're unsure of which products to start with etc of course I'm happy to help you with any of that any questions that you have but we do have all-inclusive kits as well so if you're on my in my online store you might like to look up the um, kit collection you'll find that in the menu and you'll see all of the beautiful kits there that we have there are card making kits there's project kits there's all different types of kits and everything that you need comes in those kits 
We also do at the moment have um, a couple of paper pumpkin kits that are available and you get everything in there, including instructions I forgot to add. Um, you do get everything in there that you need except for the blocks, the clear blocks. So you would still need a clear block for your um, stamps. But in the kits collection kits, they come with a block. It's a smaller block, than, it's a D size block. So the surface area is the same, but it's a thinner um, material in those ones. So that's always a great place to start. And they even come with ink in them as well. So that's a really great place to start. If you would like more information about our kits, um, feel free to get in contact with me and I can give you more information about our kits. But also too, if you love the Stampin' Up! products and you would love to get a great discount, the discount starts at 20% and you can build that up to 25% discount over time. Um, then joining Stampin' Up! is a great option as well because not only do you get the amazing discount on your products, you're also joining a fantastic um, crafting community and I would love to welcome you into our beautiful crafting community. I have a team of um, beautiful ladies who are also lovely and we have so much fun together and we just have a beautiful team community so I would love to um, give you more information about that. So to purchase the starter kit, it's only $169, but you can choose $235 worth of product to put into your starter kit. And so therefore you're getting $66 worth of free product. And I'm just gonna flip these over now. And um, you'll get free shipping on your starter kit. And then from there, you'll get your 20% discount as well, which is awesome. Now, I'm using some little foam adhesives. These are called Stampin' Dimensionals. And these are just going to give our project a little bit of a lift. So a little bit of a dimension, as the name suggests. And it's going to lift that up off the front of the card just to, to make it more interesting and more beautiful. There we go. All right. So these again are double sided. And so they've got a paper coating on this side. So I'm just going to remove that paper coating. Oh, I've got that one down in the wrong spot. Actually, that's going to pull that ribbon down. See if I can just remove this one and move that up a little bit. There we go. It's just pulling my ribbon down. I didn't want it to move my ribbon on the front of my card there. Um, yeah, so if you would like more information about joining my um, stamping community, please let me know. My team are called the Papercraft Gems. And the reason that I called named my team the Papercraft Gems is because I do believe that every person is precious and valued. And um, that is the community that we have in our team. And I like to look after my team and... Um, and we all have great um, friendships as well. All right, so now I'm just gonna pop this down on the front of my card. And I'm just lining that up left to right. And might have it down a little bit lower than center, but that's okay. There we go, beautiful. And then we can add some bling. So I've got lots of bling here to choose from. We have lots of embellishments in, um, in our catalogs, but I've got lots here to choose from. So I'm just wondering which ones I'm gonna use. I think I won't use the black matte dots, but we could add some more yellow or we could add a pop of green. Maybe some green would be good to tie in the leaves because we've got a lot of yellow going on. Or we've always got our basic rhinestones and these go with absolutely everything. As you can see, this isn't a full pack because I've already used quite a few of them, um, but they come in the three different sizes. And these just go with absolutely everything. So you can always use those. I, these are my most used um, embellishment, actually. But I think today, and I got these new ones the other day, um, the Artistry Blooms Adhesive Backed Sequins. And there's four different colored sheets of sequins. And I thought, well, these ones match. I think I won't use the squares. Um, so it's either those ones or those ones. Let's see. Well, some of those might be pretty too. Let's take out the green ones and see. 
my ribbon is uneven on the left is it all oh, sorry about that thank you Judy let's see if we can straighten that up there we go is that better is that better <laughs> my little pick tool my take your pick tool it is here yes I haven't used it yet today but I will now that I'm using my um, embellishments okay I'm thinking so the take your pick tool is a great multi-purpose tool We've got a little putty end here which is a sticky end and this is great for picking up small items picking up embellishments um, really helpful and this also screws out of the tool and you can purchase replacement heads with more putty in it and we have another tool that um, goes into here which is called a die brush which is for getting all the little bits of cardstock out of our dies and then this end has got a um, pokey pokey tool or a paper piercing tool as it's actually called um, the other end of mine I broke the other day I was a bit rough with it and it snapped um, and I've just ordered a new replacement but normally that has a spatula end and then and I've had this one for a really long time so it probably was getting a bit brittle um, and it also has a stylus end as well which um, has two different size styluses that um, come with it and so yeah so it's just a really great tool to have a multi-purpose tool and I like to use it to pick up my embellishments I find that it makes it much easier to pick up my embellishments there we go I might just put those three just there what do you think that's all we need I think I think that's really beautiful so when you're using embellishments it's good to use an odd number because it's um, really aesthetically pleasing to the eye apparently um, that that goes through a lot of design is always using three or an odd number three or five or seven so I'd like the info on the gems again please yep so we have got the matte decorative dots and I'll give you the code for those ones if you're interested in those ones this is 156289 um, matte decorative dots and they come in four different color colors but you've got like a gradient of color in each one of those so as you can see um, you start with the darker color up the top and it sort of goes down to the lightest color um, at the corner there so you've got like an ombre effect in the colors which is really beautiful these ones are the Artistry Blooms Adhesive Backed Dots and the code for that one is 152477. Then we've got these ones which are the most used ones, um, the Rhinestone Basic Jewels and they are code 144220. So they are a really great one as, as well to have in your stash. So there we go. So if there's any other information that you would like from this video, just remember that you can replay this at any time once I upload that to um, Facebook and I, it will be over on my YouTube channel as well. But I think our little project is finished. So as you can see, even though I cased one of the catalogue um, projects, which was this one here, my take on it is quite different. And so you can see how you can use the ideas from the catalog to um, as a starting point to get the ideas and then you can change it up to make it your own. So what do you think? Do you like that? Oh, that's good. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. Um, put a glue dot underneath to keep it in place yes um, I was going to do that at the end we've got our little mini glue dots as well that is an additional um, adhesive these are these can be used for lots of different things but I like to use them for my ribbon and they are great for holding your ribbon in place so I'm just going to pick it up with my take your pick tool and I'm going to slide it underneath my bow to just keep my bow in place so that it doesn't slide around there we go so now that is nice and secure and that will stay put so I usually do do that I was just trying to rush today so um, I was planning on adding that at the end but thank you for reminding me Judy that's so that's our mini glue dots 
Um, with the mini glue dots, you get 300 on the roll. Um, some people do use that as their main adhesive, but you would go through the roll very quickly. Um, so you can certainly use them as I've adhered these pieces. You could use the mini glue dots for that, but you would go through a lot of them. So I kind of usually, usually just keep mine for my embellishments and my ribbons. So there you go. So there's my pretty card. I'm really happy with how that turned out. And I think that turned out really well considering we put that together pretty much in um, only a few minutes. So there you go. All right, well, I'm going to flip my camera back up to uh, my face so that I can say goodbye to you face to face because I always like to do that. So bear with me for one moment. Thank you for all your lovely comments on my card. I'm glad you all like that. All right, so here we go. We're flipping the camera. Oh, squeaky. I didn't quite undo that one enough, did I? Made it a bit more squeaky. And tighten that back up. There we go. Flip, flip, and adjust my lights. It's a bit of a process. <laughs> there we go. All righty. Great. Good. So there's my little card. I'm really happy with how that turned out. And having the hello sentiment on there, you can use that for so many different um occasions as well it can be for anything so i think that's a really great um, sentiment to use so i'll pop up a photo of this one either later today or tomorrow um, again if you have any questions about any of the products that i've used today feel free to send me a private message um, sometimes facebook hides some of the comments on the videos so i can't always see them when i go back in so if there's anything specific that you want to know, feel free to send me a message. You'll see the message button at the top of my um, Facebook page here. Um, you'll see that there's a message button. You can click on that and that will send me a message directly. Um, so that will be great. All right. Oh, thank you so much, everyone. I'm glad that you all really liked that. But yeah, beautiful stamp set this one. And I can't wait to do more with it. And um, I'll get the dies out at some stage too and play with the dies. Um, for those of you that are new, die cutting is a whole new realm. And it's super exciting. We can do lots with dies and, and a die cutting machine. So I will um, I'll share that with you. I tend to do a lot of die cutting on my Monday lives. Not so much on my Thursdays. I try and keep my Thursdays a little bit quicker and easier. Um, oh yeah, no worries, Judy. Yes, the Take Your Pick tool is an awesome one um, to have. It's one of, I am actually, I thought last night I would like to do a video on tools, on the most, um, most used tools because we've got so many tools and I think it would be great, especially for our new stampers, to know about some of our um, most used tools that are handy to have in your stash. So I might do a video on that um, very soon as well. I hope to, I hope to do a video on that really soon so that um, new people will know um, what they need to get started. But of course, if you don't have a cutting tool and you don't have a take your pick tool, you can use what you've got. Um, before I had a cutting tool, I was using a craft knife and a metal ruler <laughs> for my cutting. So it's a bit more hard work, much quicker having a trimmer. So anyway, all right, well, I, um, oh, yes, yeah, no worries, Judy. That hello, it's from the Biggest Wish stamp set. I'll give you the code. If you've got a pen, write this down. It's 155052. So 155052, and that's the Biggest Wish stamp set. It's a really cool one. All right, well, I have to run because I have a meeting, which I'm actually late for. So I'm going to see if I can still join in on that. Um, so I had better go. If you have any questions at all, feel free to um, get in contact with me and I would love to help you uh, on your creative journey. So um, Stamparatus, yes. Also, I need to share about the Stamparatus. I'll um, do that when I do the tools video. Thanks, Judy. All right. Okay. Have a great rest of the day, everybody, and a great weekend coming up on the weekend soon. So I look forward to seeing you all again next week. Now, I will be live on Monday afternoon at 4 p.m. Australian Eastern Daylight Time. 
um, and then again next where, uh, Thursday morning at 11 a.m. So I look forward to seeing you then. So have a great day, everyone, and happy crafting. Bye.